How to Accurately Grind Angles. This project is a level 3 general machinist apprenticeship project. In this video, I will demonstrate proper setup technique to grind a 45, 30, and 15 degree angle accurately. The disclaimer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up to grind a 45 degree angle, a 30 degree angle, and a 15 degree angle. And for argument's sake, we're just going to call these angled parallels. And let's start off with this 45 degree angle. So we're going to be using a sign bar. So we're going to say sign 45 equals sign 45 equals 0.707106781 times 5 inches. We're going to be using a 5 inch sign bar and not all sign bars are 5 inches so you got to use the right number with the right length of sign bar that you have. Times 5 equals 3.5355333906. Okay so our gauge block set that we're going to be using and like all other gauge block sets only goes four decimal places to the tenths. So if we take this and go one, two, three, four, this number here is smaller than five, so it doesn't matter. So this is the gauge blocks that we're working with. So we want to get a gauge block set of 3.5355. So our first gauge block that we're going to use is 0 0.1005. This is a five tenths block. We get a 5 tenths block here, set it down, that's a 5 tenths block. Then we subtract, so that's going to be 0, 5, 3, 4, 3. So then we're going to get a 35 thou block, or a, sorry, a 135. So then it goes 0, 1, 3, 5, 0. So then we go to our gauge block set. And we pull out the 35, 135 block. That's our next block. So that's a block. Then we subtract it 0, 0, 0, 3, 3. We're going to grab our 300 thou block right here. That's our third block and then we're going to get a 300 thou block or three inch block which is going to be this guy here okay we want to ring our gauge blocks together so we make sure that they're clean uh, no grease no oil and they should stick together not a problem uh, some guys say oh you put them in at 90 and then you rotate and turn them and that works as well so they should just stick together using friction. Okay, let's take a moment to talk about clamps because we're putting this up against an angle plate. We are absolutely going to have to clamp it somehow. So first of all, let's talk about a parallel clamp. A parallel clamp, I personally dislike these clamps. I don't even like using them for layout, but that's really the only purpose in my mind these things have. I don't like them. If you have a different uh, opinion on it, you can leave it in the comment section. This type of clamp is a best clamp or a Bessie clamp. Um, I love, oops, I love these types of clamps. They work great. They're very solid, very strong. And this style of clamp is a can't twist clamp. They work very, very well and they clamp with a tremendous amount of force. Remember, whenever you're clamping anything, you have to use two clamps because one just creates a pivot point. So now let's build up our setup. So we have our gauge block set up. We have our five inch sign bar. We wanna make sure that we have good contact here and here. Now when I put my piece in to grind, I'm gonna to wanna to move this all the way over to the edge. It's too short. So we're only doing a setup at this point in time. So I can lift this up with a gauge block, set it down, move this over, try and put it in the center. And now I can start clamping. Now I'm going to be gentle putting this on. The nice thing about the Bessie clamps is 
it slides in place. So I'm not going to bump anything when I slide this guy into place. Slide it in place. We want to make sure that we're still in full contact with our setup here. And we want to make sure nothing on our clamp is above our actual workpiece. So now I can turn around and pull my setup out because it's held in place. Then I'll go around here to the other side and put my second clamp on. And I want to be extremely careful with this because what happens is almost every single time, do you see how this is sticking up? We need to guarantee that everything is lower than the top of our workpiece. Because in case our wheel travels further over, we don't want to be hitting our clamps in any way. So now this piece here is set up and ready to be ground at 45 degrees to our other angles. Okay, so now it's time to set up our sine 30 degrees. Okay, so we're going to go sine 30, sine 30 equals 0.5 times 5 equals, I know you're going to say, Ray, that's 2.5, but that's fine. 5 equals 2.5. That makes the gauge block setup pretty easy. So we have, we have 2.5000 zero, 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 because we go back four decimal places. So we're going to use a half inch gauge block first. So 0 0.5000, that's going to be our first block, which is a half inch block. It looks like this guy, it's block one. And then we only have two inches left and that is going to be our second block. So we only have two blocks in this buildup. Set up now. So we'll set up our two and a half. I already re-rung or pre-rung these in. We're going to set up our sign bar and I'm going to double check to make sure that everything moves so they're not hung up on anything. Now again, this guy would be too short. So I'm going to put this three inch block in here and then put my workpiece on top and then move this kind of to the center. So I have about a quarter of an inch there sticking above. Now we're going to add our clamps. Again, we need to add two clamps. We want to be careful not to move our setup at all. Okay, so we have that guy in there. Pull out our gauge block, and then we can remove our setup. We have our second clamp. We'll use our second clamp here. Go for a little further down because we want everything to be below this surface. Now with this setup secure, we can now bring this to the grinder and grind our 30 degrees on top. Okay, so it's time to do our 15 degree now. This guy here, gonna be grinding the top there. So we're gonna say sign 15, sign 15 equals 0.25881904.5. We're using a five inch sign bar again, times five equals 1.2940952262. Okay, remember four decimal places over, so we're going to go one, two, three, four. But if we take a look at this nine here, that's larger than five. So therefore, our number that we're going to search for is going to be one, two, nine, four, one. So we need to calculate this number. So the first thing we always do is we go from the left to the right. So we're going to get a one-tenth block. So our one-tenth block is actually 0 0.1001. That's our first block, which is this guy right here, block one. Subtract all of that, and we have a 0 0.4911. So next we're going to go with a 44 block. 
which is going to actually be 0 0.1440 block, which is this guy here. Subtract those out, 0, 0, 5, 0, 1. Now, there's a couple ways of doing this. I could make, uh, basically get a 50 thou block, which is 150 thou. You don't want to use the wear block, okay? The wear block that's 50 thou, you don't want to use that. So we're going to actually turn around. I'm going to divide mine in half. There's multiple ways of doing it. So my next one, I'm going to say, I'm going to get a block that's 0 0.5500, which is going to be this guy here. Then what's left is 0, 0, 0, 5. And then I'm going to get a half inch block, which is this block here. Okay. We will ring them together like we always do. Stack our blocks up. They all stick together. Okay. Now I'm skipping a step and I forgot to tell you, before you actually use any of these gauge blocks, always double check to make sure the number that you have in gauge block stack is actually the number that you're using, okay? So as you can tell, yes, this is the proper number. For this one, we're gonna do a little bit different. We did the angle plate and the clamps. Now we're gonna use the vise. A couple of tools that you're gonna require is you're gonna require a good parallel. You need to make sure that this is actually parallel and that it's not bent or twisted. If it's bent or twisted, it's gonna be no good. So we put our parallel in the bottom. Bring this up here. We can take our sign bar, put our sign bar in on top of our parallel. So it extends past the jaws here and here. We take our sign bar or our gauge block buildup, put it underneath our sign bar. And when we put this in, we want to move everything ever so slightly to make sure that everything is in place and there's no grit or anything underneath here. So we have our block here that we're going to grind. We'll put that guy in and then this is a wedge block just something to squish and it's a little bit shorter than the other block so we put this guy in here like this and if you can see that it is actually shorter so now i'm going to wiggle this around a little bit get it to the position that i want it to be in for clamping i'm going to close the vise clamp it down so these guys are clamped in you can see that that is higher here okay now I'm gonna come around to this side again. I'm going to pull out my gauge blocks, make sure nothing slams when it falls down. I'm going to pull out my parallel, lower my sign bar down and pull it out the back. So this guy is here, just like that. And now this guy is ready to be ground. As an alternative to the five inch block or five inch sign bar, it is possible to get smaller and custom made ones. This is a custom uh, wire EDM sign bar. It's three inches. And I also have the common numbers here for our setup. So we'll lay this down this way. So in this case, this angle here is my, third, my 15 degrees. And I could put my 15 degree block on there. And we'd be good to go. Oh, sorry, that one's 15 degrees. And we'd be good to go that way as well. So there's multiple different ways of doing this. This is just one example, including the tooling that we have at the college. Hopefully you found this entertaining and educational. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you have time, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.